Uber yeah, earnings, we're going to yeah. go right in the Uber earnings. Yeah. Uh, so we have a pretty, uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of thought this was coming, especially yesterday. There was kind of a little bit of a leak. Um, I don't know if you saw that or not. Yeah, I did, yeah. um, but the yeah. stock, the Uber stock, a, like Uber yeah. stock went up 5% or something yesterday, and then it went up quite a bit today. Um, so wow. yeah, they've had a pretty good uh, um, earnings report when it comes down to it. I know you were on the call this morning, so yeah. take it away. Yeah, so the leak was actually valid because um, yesterday Uber call options for whoever knows what they are. Um, it's a derivative off of the stock. They traded the most they have ever traded. So somebody banked big time on Uber today. Um, stock was up 11% on a market that was getting killed. Uh, long story short, I listened to the conference call. I listened to Dara, Kosho Shai, and, and Nelson Chai, who is their CFO. Okay, that's all I can say is, look, I, you guys know me. I, I'm not a lover, but this is as well as a rideshare slash delivery company can operate under the economic conditions that we're in. Okay, this is as good as anybody can do. Take my hat off to the management just for the fact that they can keep bringing, you know, these kind of numbers. I mean, look, I'm not going to sit here and argue with this. It was an amazing quarter every facet possible okay i analyzed every number top line is growing they're still not profitable megan thank you they're still not profitable thank you, megan. Did you get your hat megan um so um you know abita profitable which is like me saying i'm brad pitt according to abita but i'm never going to be brad pitt but but they did more trips than ever, 2.12 billion now. They, they Chris, they're doing one that's, million. That's a lot of dimes right there. 2.12 billion. Yeah. That's a lot of dimes yeah. and nickels yeah. that they're getting. A lot there. of dimes and nickels, but you know, that's now they broke one million orders, you know, meaning deliveries or ride share, right? Per hour, every Ooh. single hour. <laughs> wow. One, one million. Imagine the size of the system, right? And we sometimes wonder how shit goes correctly with these companies. Long story short, congrats to the management. They're doing a great job. Again, the stock is still under its IPO price. We're not going to talk about Lyft today because today is Uber's day. They hit it out of the park again. Um, you know, I talked to the professor. He gave me his opinion. And we kind of agreed on this. So key points. Uber reported first quarter results Tuesday. Revenue up 29% year over year. I mean... People are thinking we're going in a recession. These people are growing top line. Look, Uber Uber's run rate per quarter is thirty four to thirty two to thirty four billion dollars. This is a hundred and twenty five billion run rate company. This is not like we're growing one hundred and twenty five thousand. At that level, they're still growing. You know, twenty nine percent year over year. It's incredible, right? Mm -hmm. That means whatever they have done during the pandemic, after the pandemic, getting out of the pandemic. Now what they're doing with their Uber ones and, you know, Uber Eats is growing, rideshare grew. I mean, it's just there was nothing that I could nitpick and say, boo-hoo. There was one thing that I could nitpick and say, boo-hoo, is obviously they're still not profitable, gap profitable for people who know that. And in the middle screenshot, you guys will read this. Revenue for the quarter was up 29% year over year. Uber noted that its net loss for the quarter was $157 million, of which $320 million was net benefit due to unrealized gains on equity investments. Now, they have these equity investments all over the world. When they got kicked out of China and Russia and India, they took over a lot of uh, um, equity on the companies who took over their existing operations. And those fluctuate, obviously. So for this quarter... They put into every quarter, there is 300 to a billion dollars that they, they have to mark to market, it's called. They go up, down, up, down. Some quarters are lost. And this quarter, it was a gain. So if you add the 320 million gain to the 157 actual million loss, they still lost 477 million dollars. It's not like they, they're swimming in cash. But all the trajectory of the company is going the right way. The CEO said... We're very happy with the performance of all operations, all except trucking. Trucking is going the other way. Uber Eats grew, rideshare grew. Now, you guys, you guys are gonna get pissed off at me. They their take rate grew. Okay. That's because mm -hmm. incentive have incentives have been cut quite drastically, as we know as drivers. Um, their take rate is at 28.9%. Um, that's as high as it's been, period. 
Now, take rate, everybody knows what that is. Hopefully, that is how much they take off of your trip. I know I get emails every day. Oh, Serge, they took 60%, 50%. But overall take rate we're talking about. They're not talking about individual basis. Overall global, this is global, not U.S., overall global eats rideshare take rate stands at 28.9%, which is amazing, to be honest with you. Now, I think Uber is going to be the first rideshare company that becomes profitable now, if this continues. And now, my, qu my question to you first off is, when do you think it's going to be profitable? Do you think it's going to be next quarter or by the end of the year? Still? By the end of the year, yeah. By the end of the next, next two quarters, they're going to be gap profitable, meaning actual money. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the CEO said the same thing, you know, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're like ahead of the targets. So they, he said, you know, by the end of 2024, as promised, we're going to be gap profitable. Okay, fine. Um, you know, their cash position is fine. It's about $4 billion in the bank they have. Um, look, man, there was nothing wrong with this report and stock responded. Stock was up 11% on a market that was down 5%. So, I mean, yep. you know, all kudos. And um, I, I think, look, I, I'm just amazed that they could still grow. Now, if they can keep that take rate together, Chris, at 28.9% or 29%, because they're growing the top line at this level, at this comp at the size of this company, and they're still able to grow top line, meaning revenue is growing, then they don't need to take any more from the driver. So all they have to do is just keep growing, take market share well, from I think, DoorDash. I think that the other thing, I think that that pot belly pig that we're talking about right now, yeah. I think if they trimmed a little bit of the fat, you could definitely see an increase to get into well, profitability much quicker. You know, I'm going to get into that in this because there's somebody asked that question in you know, Lyft. They said, Lyft is cutting, you know, are you guys going to cut? He goes, we're going to be, headcount is going to be flat to a little bit lower. I think they're going to mess a little bit with trucking because they're not performing well. Now, he said two things that are directly related to drivers. Drivers, listen to this, okay? He said, it's all in the conference call. I'm just repeating what this guy said. So don't tell me that I'm just wishing bad things, good things for you guys. He said they're going to use AI. Hello. By the way, this is a cab company with an app. Guess how many times they use the word AI, the CFO and the CEO, Chris? Today, I'm going to yeah. say if I had to count 64 times. No, no, that's not that high. Software companies do that, but they, they use it 11 <laughs> times. 11 times they used, okay? And and I was counting, you know, intentionally. So the way they're going to use AI, they're going to make the GPS navigation part of the app better. They're going to make the, you know, ETAs better. Meaning like when they give you an, you know how we complain about that now under upfront fares, when a trip goes longer by time, they're not adjusting, right? Yep. They're saying they're going to use AI to make that a lot tighter. So pretty much whatever you see upfront on the app is what you're going to get as a driver and a passenger. I'm like, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. But the part that I did not like, and it's in there, you guys go listen. He said, support, are you guys listening? <laughs> support may actually be completely going to AI bots. And, and they're saying they're being trained really, really well. And that, you know, human interaction may not be necessary after maybe a year or so going forward. Oh, boy. They're saying that the AI is learning so fast that they're using is learning so fast. And it's, it's the conversational AI, you know, the, 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 in the chat, you know, we text yeah. back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying they're amazed that in a short period of time, how well it is behaving like a human. Yeah. This is, well, this is just quote what, for what quote, are, people. This is not me. This is a quote. One for of quote the other people. things too, though, is if you listen to, to Google, when they were talking about their AI uh, assistant bots, yeah. when you're actually calling a company, like let's say a hairstylist yeah. to book an appointment, you're talking to a bot. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't even realize it. So yeah. the technology is already there. It's just a matter yeah. of employing it. So Uber um, said, and, Uber. and I have a feeling, yeah, that's going to be something that's going to be even even talking to somebody when when you have to call support yeah. could potentially become a, a bot. And yeah, then like it'll he, just he listen it like to a predictive he model. It, he said it is already behaving very human like and it's going to only get better. And I'm going like, holy crap. But this, that's the news for you guys. As far as and we we'll have to you know finish segments faster now. As far as overall, if this engine had eight cylinders, all eight are firing beautifully. Okay, period. No ifs and buts about it. Um, lastly, 
for the drivers, what does this mean? You know, they talked a little bit about, uh, you know, Lyft coming in, competing now, you know, what's going to happen. He goes, we, they have actually 1 million more drivers on the platform than they had. Okay. So everybody loves Uber as a driver and a passenger, and it seems like it. Now let's go to the next couple of screenshots, and then I'll explain you. Hold the on, before, before that, there's there's one thing that I do want to point out that that uh, is definitely something worth mentioning um, mm -hmm. if people are not listening. But uh, in the middle of that, that screenshot, it says, in a prepared statement, CEO Dara said Uber is off to a strong start for the year. He said the company's global scale also provides it with a significant data advantage of its competitors that will allow Uber to employ AI solutions, there's AI, yeah. on the consumer side, which we've talked about, and the earner side of the business. And earners, if you don't know that, is drivers. Yeah. Uh, people and who then, are you know, earning and, an income, and then, uh, not employees, know, the, but earners. Read the and then, paragraph in the third screenshot in the middle yeah, paragraph. Again, they're talking well, there, about- There's one above that, though. Uh, yeah. It says, uh, Karashai, Ka whatever the hell is that, uh, oh, said Uber job. is, yeah already using AI to predict highly accurate arrival times for rides and deliveries to expedite driver onboarding, which you had mentioned, um, more reliability and cost eff eff efficiently. Um, and then also, um, then that, that third paragraph you're talking about, or middle one, we yeah. are still in the early stages of using large data models to power improved user experiences and efficiencies across our platform with much more to come. So yeah. yeah. They're going to try to streamline and have everything looked at where they can literally give that exact moment the the best possible price to the best possible driver. And I yeah. don't mean that in the driver's favor. I mean that yeah. in Uber's favor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if, if you don't think that they're doing that, yeah. uh, 100%. So yeah. it, it's right there when it comes to this article. And, and, you know, the other thing, by the way, Chris, the, the, the AI part, right? It's cost cutting, actually, without cutting. So... You know, yep. at some point, these things are going to be so good that why do you need human intervention in Philippines that they're paying for or whatever? Not right. So well, not only that, but yeah. also, you know, sometimes some of the the in uh, those are probably all outsourced employees to begin with. So, yeah, they're probably oh, not well, actually employees of Uber, but they're actually probably like a, a firm that's representing Uber. Um, uh, but I don't actually know specifically. I don't no, know but, how that's no, all set I, up. I, but... You're right. They're not employees, but it still costs money, right? So, oh, for sure. Know. So if they cut that out, but the other thing too is like, how many employees do they have again? 33,000. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, yeah, they have a much more expansive business than uh, Lyft does, which yeah. is operating at a much smaller scale. Um, and you, we, we could see in the numbers, but yeah. I'm telling you, hey, we, we, you look at, at how many employees are at Uber Yep. And you look at their average salary and you cut a few of those people that may be just dead weight. Um, you, you position yourselves a lot better and then yep. you don't have to take from the driver as he had said. Um, and, and, and that's and, the whole know, thing too with this AI efficiency and streamlining yeah. and everything. Um, well, obviously think, those yeah. are the buzzwords right now because that's where, you know, they want to want to look at it. Well, yeah, because, you know, uh, chat GPT, AI, whatever you want to call it, writes better than me for RSG now. What does RSG need? Here, right? <laughs> so, I mean, to me, it's like, Obviously, you know, you have expertise and, you know, you're actually doing the work. ChatGPT is not going to get in the car and deliver food. But long story short, a lot of people are pissing in their pants. That includes, by the way, you know what that includes? High-end quarters. IBM yesterday said they're going to freeze hiring. They're not going to hire the 7,500 new quarters that they were going to hire because AI is writing software faster and better than a lot of the quarters that we're going to hire anyway. So quarters are also pissing their pants. It's not just us rideshare drivers, guys high-end high-end quarters are also going like mm -hmm. yeah yeah so one thing to look at here is okay this this uh, you guys will hammer me with this but um, i put it here just to, for you guys to see it this is from the slide deck of the earnings report as they call it you know um here's on the second you know look mobility <laughs> shit man 15 billion dollars up 40 percent year over year think about it come on now and delivery, yeah. even now the pandemic is over for two years, people are still ordering stuff. And and look at the balance, Chris. I mean, how much more balance a company can get? 50-50, bro. I mean, yeah. well, unless, I th they're, I look, the man, unless they're doctoring these numbers, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. You know what? Honestly, I think the biggest thing was because of, if, if you didn't have COVID happening, then you would not see the delivery arena where it is today when it I comes to, to Uber Eats and DoorDash. Yeah. But 
I think it's just one of those things that has just been so easy for people and they got yeah. so accustomed to it for, you know, a year. It just reinforced you to, yeah. to have to sit at home and order food if you wanted food. Yeah. And um, I, I think that's probably why they're still continuing to do well. I think it's just kind of become one of those things that are, you know, kind of ingrained in people um, yeah. to I mean, be able I, to I, do that. You know, I'm a huge skeptic of this company, right? And the management, but let me tell you something through uber one their stickiness is so high now like uber one is the subscription model yep uber one retained customers think about this chris are ordering or using the platform 4x to the new customer so that's how valuable uber one are and that's growing 50 percent at a time so people are think, figuring now i pay the 9.99 in a month but i'm going to get a lot of services for a discount or free I mean, there is nothing wrong that everything they touch, they're, it's working. Okay. You know what? Wait until Uber comes out with a cost calculator. And this is the co not for drivers, this is for riders. They're going to come out with the car cost calculator, and it's going to tell you how much you could potentially save by getting rid of your vehicle and then just sticking with Uber. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to come out with that soon. I guarantee you. I don't, I don't <laughs> doubt it. I don't doubt it. And the other thing that, uh, you know, they, 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 it was in the slide deck is this on the right side under the look they said they redesigned the uber app mobility airport information blah 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 one thing that that caught my also ear is their advertising is growing at 70 to 100 percent remember we talked about this that this was a no-brainer it's yeah. kicking in a billion dollars in revenue already in a short period of time i mean holy crap right that's another thing that they're succeeding with and on the driver's side okay Driver engagement at an all-time high with strong earnings levels. Now, I don't know about the with strong earnings levels part, but they have this chart. That's the mean line. The dotted line is the mean line. And, you know, when it took a dive, you guys can see the chart there. That's the pandemic, right? Nobody was driving rideshare, okay? This is only for rideshare, by the way, not deliveries. And then it came back to the mean line. And then, so what you guys need to do is you guys need to, you know, keep an eye on this chart. Every time that dips way below, it's going to come back to the mean line. But by the time for it to come back to the mean line, they have to put out a crazy amount of incentives for the drivers to get their cars out of the garage. And I looked into my history of incentives in L.A. Every time that thing separated itself going south from the mean line, man, was I getting some juicy quest. You know what I mean? Just to get me out there. And every time it gets added, the quest get cut. They lower the cost. So, you know. But uh, monthly supply uh, per active hour, driver hour is up 17%. So we confirm that people are driving more because W2s are not enough. And a lot more people are out there trying to make a couple hundred bucks cash. And on the right side, the green graph with the mean line again, with the dotted line, that's the weekly earnings. So the chart goes back. If we took out the Win25 part of it, you guys will see the date is 2019. So from 2019 to 2023 now um on active hour again not online earnings are up 43 percent on the driver's side now you guys may believe this you guys may not believe this however uh if you are going to cuss me out or uber out first take a look at only active hour this is utilized hour active hour only um i'm not sure how it would look on online hour right but According to them, on active hour, driver earnings are up 43% from 2019. Well, yeah, if you do, if you're, if you're changing that to, to active hour versus, versus like yeah. total hour, yeah, it's definitely look skewed quite in one it'll favor. Look very so. different. Yeah, it'll look very different. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, so, I mean, you know, yeah. man, hey, my hat's off, Dara. Good job. I mean, what else is there to say? That's it. You know? Yep. Um, so, I mean, there. overall, yeah. The stock is doing well because the earnings report came out very well. Uh, more people are using the service than ever before, pretty much. And um, yeah, it's very interesting to see exactly what's going to end up happening over the next couple of months, yeah. uh, next couple is, of quarters, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, th this, this again is where quarter, I'm sorry, quarter four. So, the, you know, three months ago when we were doing these reports, talking about yeah. the Uber report the week yeah. prior, and then the lift report the week after there was a big divergence between the two you know mm -hmm. before that it was pretty much the same but now you're seeing two different two different roads coming uh, yeah. and it's going to be really interesting to see how lift ends up going this route because um, you know what's going to happen in in their arena uh, and then you know you you got to remember that's before 
uh, Richard came in, now that Richard's in, uh, what is it going to look like? What are the changes that are going to be happening? And, you know, over the next couple of quarters, it's going to be pretty interesting to see on their side of things, too. I, mean, I asked him that question. He goes, we haven't seen any competition yet. He laughed at it, literally. It's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, what is there? I mean, this is a well-oiled machine, man. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, again, I'm not an over-lover boy. So monthly active users still went up to 132 million from 131 million. So they're still getting new customers in, okay? And yep. they were very proud, including tips, okay, people? So don't complain. Including tips. $13.7 billion went into the earners' pockets in this quarter with a B, total, like outlay to drivers, including incentives, bonuses, whatever, whatever, right, including tips. So the, comp uh, the company said we're proud that we can supply a livelihood to a lot of people and $13.7 billion. So think about this. $30 billion was their, you know, um, gross order value, meaning whatever they collected, right? Out of that, 13.7 billion went out the door to the drivers, right? And and if you calculate, you know, we, which we did, 33,000 employees times $80,000 average, top executives, stock options, all this stuff, that's why they're still not making money because they have a lot of expenses, okay? Yeah. So, but 14, almost 14 billion went into the economy, Chris, into people's pockets so they can spend and make a light living, okay? I mean, that's the good part of the gig economy. There are good parts, there are bad parts. Just fourteen billion dollars—a lot of money, bro. Yeah, so I'm like, and I think the go. the other thing that made people excited too, um, and this is this will be the last thing I, I say about their earnings is the um, the talk of if things continue down the road, route that they're taking, meaning they're making more, their bookings are up, all of that stuff. If that trend continues, you know, in the next couple of quarters, they may be looking at stock buyback, which means that will be less stock out in the wild for people to buy, which will help raise the price, uh, hopefully. And then also the other side is the possibility of dividends uh, going back into shareholders as well. So I think on a shareholder perspective, people are going to be excited for that aspect because you know if you're a company, um, th that means they're looking for profit at this point. They're not, they're not going beyond uh, and saying, oh, we're gonna do uh, the well, profitability, you know, but actual profitability. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I I mean, I, I kind of agree with that just for the fact that, you know, this company, I don't think will issue a dividend that a tech company, most tech companies don't, but buyback, not sure, you know, you guys, you know, may not know this, but Uber um, owes like they have long term debt that's coming due in 2025 to 2030, close to $10 billion, right? So when they borrowed that money, um, you know, rates were at 0%. Now, corporate bonds are six, seven, eight percent. So, you know, they have to roll that over because they're not making enough money yet to pay off that debt, just like your credit card debt. Um, so that $10 billion between 2025 and 2030 has to get refinanced somehow. And if the rates stay where they are, the cost of refinancing all that debt is going to go through the roof. So I'm not sure they'll do buybacks. But look, man, hats off. Good quarter. Actually, three good quarters in a row now. I mean, I'm telling you this. Yep. Okay. Like, let's call it the way we see it. Three good quarters in a row. So... Dara, you know, now, you're like, maybe, you know, just come on, man. Come on, let's do it. Let's, let's get together. <laughs> let's have a drink. <laughs> we, we invite you onto the show, and, and we'll we'll sit back. We'll have a good time. We'll hang out. Um, we, we might ask a, a couple of drilling questions, but, you know, we'll take it easy yeah. on you. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, all right, I mean, cool. all, all in all, uh, yeah, when it comes to it, that was a, a good quarter for Uber. Congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, we do want them to, to do well, because if that means they're doing well uh, and that means bookings are up, that means more deliveries, that means more bookings for rideshare. And that means you're out there being able to make more money. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream. Show me the money club with Sergio and myself Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.